1914, Patrick Pierce was a 34-year-old Dubliner. Um, he had been born and reared in Dublin. Um, here in the Hermitage Ratfarnham, where we're now sitting, uh, he lived here with his mother, Margaret Pierce, his brother Willie, who was to die with him in 1916, a mere two years away, and uh, his two sisters, uh, Mary Bridget and Margaret. His involvement with cultural nationalism began when he joined at the early age of 16 the Gaelic League um, in 1896. He very rapidly rose in that organisation to become the editor of its newspaper, the Unply of Sullish, or the Sword of Light as it would be in English. And for much of the first decade of the 20th century, he was preoccupied with his role as an editor and a journalist of, uh, that, uh, of that newspaper. A uh, significant event, 1904, he goes to uh, Belgium and he experiences uh, Flemish and French being taught bilingually in the schools of Flanders. And this he finds hugely inspirational. He was always a man of action. If he saw something that could be done and how it might be done, that's the way he'd go. So he came back home and he said, this is the way to promote the, the speaking of Irish and the, and the revival of Irish culture generally in Ireland. It's by starting a school and showing in an exemplary way how this can be done. So in 1908, he sets up St. Enda's, not here, but three miles closer into the city, in Collinswood House in Ranelagh. Uh, but by 1910, he's very dissatisfied at that location and requires a much grander, more... Uh, a situation that's more influenced by nature and the surroundings uh, of woodland and parkland and this is indeed what he finds in 1910 here. He moves out here uh, but in doing so of course he takes on a hugely onerous financial challenge with the Hermitage Rathfarnham and by 1912 this school is in financial crisis um, and this financial crisis is one of the background factors that creates a kind of a darker sense of anxiety in Pierce the cultural project is beginning to fail largely for financial reasons. He feels that the educational system, which is the British system of education in Ireland, is beginning to fail him. And this politicises him to some extent from being a cultural nationalist with the optimism to say that if we can become, um, shall we say, uh, completely Irish speaking and devoted to our own traditions, uh, on, as a purely cultural project we'll have achieved as much as is required. Um, but by 1913 he's beginning to feel we need to change the whole circumstance. In other words, the political circumstances of British rule in Ireland is the source of the problem. He only arrives at that belatedly about in that very short period between joining the volunteers in November 1913 um, and up to the beginning of 1914 when he joins the IRB.